Testing, testing. Hello. Good morning, Yeruki. How are you today? Pretty good. Well, uh, sleepy, actually. Hmm? Sleepy, actually. Sleepy? I do apologize. Uh, what time is it over there? It's about 4 p.m. right now. Okay. I guess I'm not the only one who had a late night then. <laughs> At least, I personally was kind of up until 4 in the morning doing YouTube stuff. I also, the whole posting this on YouTube thing was totally last minute last night when I realized, oh, this is actually kind of cool. Um, it was very impromptu. I will say that, I'll, I will start off by saying that I'm actually a English major in the real world. I actually have a hold a bachelor's degree in this. So, mm -hmm. not really a professor or anything. But um, I do like to help people out with creative writing, and that's what I was doing last night with Christian. Um, basically, just kind of putting together, uh, putting together more or less what his VTuber lore was for his character. Um, a lot more than he expected or had at first. At any rate, as I was telling him, there is there are very few dumb ideas, so I am also kind of optimistic that we'll be able to create something for your character. There's no pressure either, it's just we're pretty much just having a conversation. There's not like no like homework or anything to be done. <laughs> <laughs> anything but homework. Yeah, no kidding, right? After several years of that I'm glad to be done. <laughs> uh let me just do what was I gonna do? There we go. Much better. Just gonna open up a Word document here to take notes if necessary. Otherwise, um, so I'm here with Yeruki, who is also a VTuber such as myself. Uh, go ahead and describe what kind of character that you play as in Twitch. Well, it's not really a character. Actually, I don't really necessarily like play into a, some sort of character role or anything. I just. I just am myself, to be honest. Oh, that's cool. I mean, that's perfectly fine. There are some VTubers who basically just play as themselves, except turn into an anime character. Uh, yeah, that's basically me. <laughs> <laughs> um, What kind of lore were you hoping to create for yourself, or did you just want to make your uh, Wii version interesting, I guess? or uh, The latter. Latter, huh? All right. Yeah. We can work with that. Were you hoping to create something fictional or just um, basically talk about yourself as a streamer? I really don't know, actually. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Let's go in a different direction then. What do you typically stream? Uh, shooters, mostly Apex. Uh, I had a Valorant uh, collab stream. Like a day ago, right? I think. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Well, you... I try to like uh, branch out to other games as well. Did you enjoy Valorant? <laughs> I did. All right. Although, although setting it up on OBS wasn't exactly fun. <laughs> oh, it never is. As they say, all of the all streams are scuffed or will be scuffed at some point. <laughs> um. What kind of VTubers did you play Valorant with, and like, how did you decide that you're going to do a Valorant collab? Did you meet other like uh, people who played Valorant on a professional level, or was this just like a friend, sort of friendly, comp friendly uh, sort of thing? Or uh, I've played with. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna list all of those people in a second to you. Sure. But uh, it's mostly like a friend group. Uh, I didn't really play Valorant. Um, before, I mean, I've had like two attempts to get into the game, but it didn't really work out. But now I'm kind of like actually into the game. I see. Uh, okay, uh, let me see. Okay. I'll just go by uh, Twitter handles so it's easier. Sure. And that would be Kumikami, which is the friend that uh, initially got me into this collab. And there were three other members I had to um, 
uh, we need to meet up with and get to know each other. So Whisper Gravity and Cupcake Witch. It looks like and the it looks like the VTubers that you played with were mostly fantasy for our VTubers and as well. You got here a cute little paladin VTuber, you got a uh, a mystic. I'm not sure what kind of mystic that they are, but um you can kinda of tell from the avatar that they also got a little bit of a fantasy setting going on there. You also got gravity here. I'm not sure what kind of VTuber this person is without quick clicking on their link. And also a literal witch named Venia, Cupcake Witch. That's so cute. <laughs> um, I personally have never played Valorant, so the most I know about is that it's um a kind of variation on the Counter Strike formula with uh special abilities. It's, it's like it's like Counter Strike and Overwatch. <laughs> I heard that basically. too. Look, the gameplay somehow manages to look a lot slower than Overwatch, though. Um. At least, as far I, as I find, I find, I actually find it even more slower than CS because I don't know. Just really, like, I don't know. Just like tighter maps, like everything is much more com compact. Not as I much uh, B rushing, or not as much rushing B, and not as much um, <laughs> trigger exactly. finger gameplay. <laughs> Interesting. It has its uh, annoying moments with the character abilities. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty much all hero shooters, I feel like. Except for TF2, which is pretty straightforward, I guess. <laughs> but I'm a little bit biased. Alright, so, what did you play before Valorant? Before Valorant, uh, you mean like a main game or what uh, exactly? Whichever, like, what did you prefer to stream before Valorant? You said that you were kind of branching out, so I'm assuming that you had a previous main game or main games, I should say. Uh, it was mostly Apex for the most part with my buddies, which is just my brother, when he actually used to play the game uh, as much when he used to, like, play a lot of the game. Now he really doesn't. And also a uh, common friend, which is Jake. I still play with him. I'm probably gonna get back uh, more into the game with him. I see. Soon enough. But uh, before also Apex, and I guess before the whole VTuber persona thing. I used to uh, play and stream later uh, Team Fortress 2, which I've played on a professional level. -ish. Oh, that's very interesting. So you did used to play some of the FPS games on like an esports level sort of thing, or at least approaching that. Yeah. It was like a community thing. It's not. It wasn't really like an official endorsed thing but yeah that's the closest i've been to a quote-unquote esports pro <laughs> that's fine almost all esports started off as community and fan based things anyway it's only in recent years that they started becoming you know a uh, formal or like professional quote-unquote <laughs> yeah um is there any reason why well you mentioned already that you started to branch out into other games is there any specific reason other than that that you start branching out or uh wait uh, can you rephrase that oh sorry um basically you mentioned earlier that you wanted to branch out into other games and mm -hmm. i was wondering as i was basically what i was going with that question is whether or not you still played tf2 and other games or if you were just trying to look for something new because the game was getting old or that sort of thing uh the latter like just like I'm pretty sure if people are gonna watch the same thing over and over, it's gonna get bored. That's and true. Even for me, uh, this the playing same thing, Apex, uh, just gonna get bored as heck. I've kind of had a branching out, um, uh, in form of uh, playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on a hundred percent playthrough, Ooh. which I've completed pretty sure in like a week or two. Don't remember. <laughs> And now there are, there are plans, uh, very, very big plans, in quotation marks, because it really depends on my mood, <laughs> uh, which is to uh, play Death Stranding, Director's Cut Edition. Ooh. I've played the game before, I know w what's happening, I, f I still remember more or less, but uh, yeah, it's been almost a year since I've played the game. I see. Uh, Hiyo Kojima fan? Hell yeah, I freaking love uh, <laughs> Kojima games. You played the other Metal Gears too, I'm assuming? I've played a crap ton of Metal Gears. I'm still uh, in a playthrough of sorts 
of Metal Gear Solid 4 on the emulator. I'm pretty sure I have or had uh, streams where I did uh, basically MGS4 but on, on a emulator. Okay, I see. <laughs> so, in addition to FPS games, you also play, or at least play what played one of the Grand Theft Autos in a week, mm -hmm. and you're also a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. Um, mm -hmm. Those are actually completely different genres, too, so I have to wonder, um, do you generally, do you like stealth action games, or do you like open world or Actually, you know what? I'm not really entirely sure what GTA would fall under as far as genre. I guess that would be open world, open world, because it's, well, GTA... Open world action adventure. Yeah, I guess GTA would almost be its own thing, really. I mean, Saints Row is, what, a GTA-like. That's also kind of... And then you got... Home you mean Wars to say GTA clone? GTA clone. And then... The only other game I could think of that's in that similar genre to the, both those games would be home or home, would be the Simpsons Home and or uh, the Simpsons home and, run. home and Run, which is really old now. But I yeah, I've heard of the game. I've heard of the game. Back then, that was pretty much just called a Simpsons clone of GTA. <laughs> so, um, hmm. Let me see. Oh, the game is older than me. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really showing my age by even mentioning a game, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So you pretty much start. I used to play TF2 nearing a kind of professional level, whatever that means. Um, and you also clearly have played Counter Strike at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. CS, did you play Counter Strike 1.6 or did you start with Go or any of the uh, Well, technically, when I was young, I was like six or seven mm -hmm. years old. I did, I did used to play 1.6, which pre I'm pretty sure like 90% of the time was just exclusively on bots and on the map CS Assault. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, but that technically counts, I guess. But yeah, uh, I've mostly played uh, Global Offensive. Like off and on, because I sometimes had a really big um, not I but like urge. I don't know how to describe the word just to play the game. And um, my top rank was only supreme. I'd never reach global elite. I want to, <laughs> but uh, playing in solo isn't exactly a good idea for my sanity. Yeah, no kidding. It gets kind of toxic out there. I imagine. Yeah, it's just no fun at the at that point. Yeah, fair enough. Sometimes when you want to go for these ranks, you do need to find a way to make things, if not if it's not already enjoyable to be in with, then find a way to f make it enjoyable. Otherwise, it just sort of feels like an empty merits, more or less. Mm. Unless you're playing for the specific reason of just getting this top rank, in which case I know some people will use that as their primary driving force, but I totally get what you mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so I, have, I have forgot to mention this. Also, uh, Europa Universalis Four, which yeah, also has its like off and on um, phase. Oh, so you like playing grand strategy games as well? Mm hmm. I kind of like Warcraft Three, but I've never actually like um, played the multiplayer or uh, come. And I've completed, yeah, completed. Uh, like the main story. Uh, an RTS. It, it, it just, <laughs> it's just like sometimes I'm like, hey, I wanna play Warcraft Three. I played for like an hour or two, maybe complete the first human uh, story, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about so, Reign of Chaos and not the, the Frozen Throne. I'm talking about both. Oh. So you... but, but yeah, but 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 yeah, the the human story, yes, uh, it's a reign of chaos one. Oh, awesome! I kind of, it's kind of say. I mean, back when Warcraft three was brand new and the uh, and Blizzard was not a garbage fire <laughs> and was still just called Blizzard, it was just Blizzard by itself. It was probably, and I'm extremely biased because I used to be the biggest Blizzard uh, fan person when I was young and back when the game was new. Um, it used to be one of the most, one of the biggest uh, online games to play. 
not just for the competitive modes and whatnot, but also, but mostly for the custom maps of which um, the custom maps and the modding community at the time and the absolute freedom that the freedom that the game and the uh, creation, not creation kit, um, I actually forgot the, what they called the uh, modding equipment, modding software that came with the game at the time, but the what you could do with that stuff allowed so much creative freedom and allowed so many creation of new game types, some of which you can still see today in standalone games like Dota. Yeah, and, like Warcraft created Dota, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, In fact, it was the original... Well, the original game type was called Aeon of Strife, which was the very first of the Dota likes at the time. And Dota was just a addition to the formula, which basically used the same formula, but made use utilized the entire map. It's supposed to just um, a left versus right map. And Dota was ended up being the one that survived into the present day. I can tell you that just as it is today, it was always extremely toxic, but also extremely <laughs> competitive and also extremely popular at mm. the time. Um, incidentally, outside of the current Battle.net, the original, the originals, Warcraft 3 game types and etc. And the original Battle.net still exist on private servers. In fact, not just the other day, I went to the labor of trying to find one of these so-called private servers and setting it up on my own rig. Haven't gotten a chance to play yet though because, as you might imagine, the population that still plays on that particular private server is kind of low. Um, but if you do get the chance, I do know that there's still some people that play on Warcraft 3's online modes in spite of uh, Refor the Reforge controversy. <laughs> Uh, it's not even a controversy. It's a flat-out disaster. It's probably one of the worst PR moves that Blizzard's done in their history of existing. But um, yeah, just ju just like the remasters of um the three D trilogy of Grand Theft Auto. Mm, just well, I guess it's debatable on who did or did their uh series worse, um Rockstar or Blizzard. But I personally have not played GTA since. Vice City, maybe? It's been a while. Oh. But, um, if you do get the chance, I totally suggest that you pop online um, to basically try some custom modes. Definitely play one of the tower defenses. <laughs> or, if they, I'm not sure if they still make these, but um, Winter Mall used to be the best series of tower defenses that pop up on Old Warcraft 3. Or, I don't know if they still make MOBAs. Before they used to be, before they were called MOBAs back then, before they were called MOBAs on Warcraft 3's custom server or custom games list, but that'd be cool to check out as well. Um, I kind of got off track. Uh, so Europa Universalis, uh, Universe. I'm sorry, I'm messing up the name. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Do you play in any other grand strategy games or games similar to that, like say Crusader Kings or? I've also played back in the day in like maybe two years ago let me see uh yeah i've played two years ago uh hearts of iron 4 i see i played 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 a ton a ton a ton and just like everything crashed and i haven't played it for two years now what do you mean by everything crashed i don't know things just got bored Okay, so more like a burnout, I guess? Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> uh, would you like to talk about what Hearts of Iron 4, Hearts of Iron 4 was like, or...? Well, it's, are you asking for, like, what, what was the game like? Oh, yeah, pretty much what the game was like. Um, I must admit, as much as I also tend to play some Grand Strategy games, I mostly play 4X games myself, so... I'm not entirely up to date on what the gameplay is like of Hearts of, of, Hearts of Iron and uh, Europa Universal, Uni Universal, Uni Universalis. Universalis. <laughs> well, it's just basically a World War II simulator ish kind of thing. You can play as any country in like between the years, I think, 1936 to. I think the, the game took a at like. 1940? No, 
950? I don't remember <laughs> the exact um, date at which the game is like, okay, it's done. Well, yeah, it, it, from any country that's like in 1936, you can place any country and you can do war, basically. Well, mostly it's centered, centered around the actual historic rev- um, events of World War II. Or you can go alternative history if your country has an actual thing. Um, by actual thing, I mean like a focus where where you can actually change stuff, such as like um, in Germany you can go and defy um, the Mustache Man. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to say uh, something's yeah. allowed. I'm not so... sure what's really allowed on YouTube either, where I was I'm planning on posting this, but um, yeah, better to just avoid mentioning uh, who are mentioning. Stash, the, the, the stash fidget, man. This, <laughs> the, the, the fidget spinner people, flag yeah, the, people. The so the fidget spinner people. You know how the flag is like. Oh like, oh like, shit! The fidget. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it took me a little bit. Fidget spinners are one of those dumb fads that just came and went, and I forgot. The... <laughs> Bro. But no, I totally yeah, get um... what you mean. <laughs> But you can defy the funny mustache man and you can uh, either restore the monarchy as it were like before or uh, World War One, or go down a democratic path. But yeah, other countries which aren't li- really um, have any DLCs or any given any thought into them like uh, let's pick up a random nation that really does not matter during the events, so Bhutan or freaking Nepal, they, they don't have a focus tree. You can change ideologies and try to conquer the world. That's but... kind of cool, actually. So you could pretty much start at, like, Madagascar or something, and... Well, technically, yes, that is possible. Hmm. But yeah, mostly centered around Europe and also East Asia, because, you know, Japan did their thing mm-hmm. in China. Now I'm curious if you could start off as the Philippines and take over Asia. Well, yes, you can. Wow. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't hear more about Hearts Iron 4. It kind of sounds like... It almost sounds like what people like to do with Crusader Kings, except on a global scale, or at least a World War II era scale. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, you can also do that in Europe by Universalized 4. And I think for, like, World Conquest type of things, or just overall also long-term gaming then uh europa universalis is the better one because uh the fires of iron 4 it can be a bit stale at times because a lot of powers are just really set in stone and you have to work your way around that whereas in europa universalis 4 a lot of things can change just over time it's not like um the same power is gonna be the same powerful power as before i see i see I don't know if uh, what I'm saying is is making sense. So like it's it's like, making sense. I'm listening. It's like um, Britain, France, USA, and Japan, right? Mm-hmm. Germany. They all like have big strong militaries and stuff. And as a random small country, it really cannot compete. But in U- European Universalist War, well, obviously things are different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can become a great power yourself over time and not have to. Exactly, have like fight um, a big, big country because, like, it's really a thorn when it's like you're a small country. I agree. I mean, the closest game I could, I keep bringing up Crusader, Crusader Kings 3 only because it's the only game I've played that's of similar vein. And I always, I mean, I, it is it is from Paradox, that's true, too. it's also a Paradox game. Um, and I typically like playing as Ireland and pretty much being the one that ends up conquering the rest of Western Europe as opposed to the opposite. Similar thing, I guess. Yeah, although it's like a much smaller scale because you cannot really go to America and mm. stuff like that. Aww. Can't colonize America. <laughs> or recolonize, I should suppose. All right. Mm. So, so far, we've actually gone from, at when we first started this conversation, um, it seemed like the only thing that you played was FPS games, but you actually play a, a wide variety of video games. You got RTS games in there, you got 
uh, grand strategy games in there. You've got uh, GTA open world likes, like GTA. Um, true. And most, most like um, shooters are like my main thing, my main games. Shooters are yeah. yeah. Okay. And you recently got into Valorant because you wanted to branch out from playing the same game over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. Do you... oh, yeah, there's also um, Yakuza Zero, I guess. Ooh. Or just all like all of the uh, Yakuza franchise. Um, all the Yakuza franchise. All of the uh, mainline games in Yakuza. Have you completed all the mainline games in Yakuza? In uh, Yakuza, I've. Or... I've completed uh, Yakuza 0, Kiwami, Kiwami 2, uh, 3 remastered, 4 remastered, and I'm still on some sort of burnout because I really cannot find myself able to play the fifth um, game. I'll, I had that sort of burnout when I was trying to play um, yeah, Kiwami 2. Oh. It took me, like I think, a year for me to actually get back into the game. It's like, okay, Q1, 2, then Yakuza 3, then Yakuza 4, and halt. Everything stopped because Yakuza 5, and I'm burned out. I see. Or just maybe not in the mood. <laughs> it's probably, it could be just a mood thing. I mean, unless you were, like, marathoning those games. Like, then again, playing the same kind of game through four or five iter iterations and remasters, I could see why you'd start burning out after a while. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just kind of need to try something new for a change to get out of that too. So if you're doing right by yourself, which is important. Did you stream, incidentally, um, regarding your streams, did you stream all these games or were these just things you did in your own time? Um, a lot of those things were done before I was a VTuber. Although I did oh, okay. um, sort of um, debut. With Yakuza Zero, with an eight-hour stream. Well, wow. Yeah, well, it's not. It wasn't exactly a view. I was like, okay, I have a PNG. I can finally get the VTubing. <laughs> so you started yeah. off as a PNG tuber. Correct. I started out as a PNG tuber. Hmm. And then later, through some connections, I have learned of someone that can do me a model. And I, I only I understood it as just the model, as the base with no rigging. Mm -hmm. Turns out there was rigging. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know of any live 2D models that don't have a little bit of rigging already built into them, so that makes sense. At least the mouth, for sure. And maybe some very basic uh, turning motions. Um, there was also, yeah, there was, there's also Don't Stop Together, which counts as a survival game. Ooh, a survival game. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of like the game in general, but right now it's mostly been used as a collab game with other people. That mm -hmm. being the Geocat, Lolly Knight, and there's this uh, pre-debut VTuber called the Nox. Nox, huh? Nox, yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's like quote unquote a lot of variety games, but mostly yeah, Apex stuff like that. Who do you like to play in Apex? In Apex, um, I I guess I don't really have a specific character that I like to play, but um, when I do play uh in ranked uh, in higher ranks at least, then I usually go for either Gibby, Gibraltar, or uh Valkyrie. I see. Because it was mostly us. Um, I had the set, set team, right? With my brother and the common <laughs> friend. Uh, my Our common friend would play Crypto, the hacker man. Hmm. And our, my brother would usually play uh, mostly, yeah, some sort of aggressive character. I see. So like Oct Octane or like someone that's like doesn't really have any mobility i guess or at least it's basically just an aggressive character um it's been a while since i played apex so feel free to correct me if i'm wrong is gibraltar the tanky kai guy the guy that has the shield yep. all right yeah he has a shield the big thick boy <laughs> the big boy and i think i quit playing before valkyrie was released but are they the one that uh has a jetpack 
flies around. Correct, correct. That's awesome. the Japanese lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you like playing the uh, thick boy and the uh, and the jet powered lesbian? That's it. Yep. I don't think Apex has as strong of a class system as other games, so I'm not sure if using class terms to them works as well but um i get so i get the impression that you can play either you could you can you're comfortable playing either a supportish character or a considerably more um mobile more deep DPS yeah, although, against. although ironically even though i'm supposed to be like more defensive or like uh, mobility just like the title is like not exactly fighting on the front lines or rushing into the front lines I do everything but stay down in the front lines. It's maybe it's better that way. Maybe people are scared by the sight of a thick boy coming in, <laughs> um, just coming in out of nowhere. Um, I'm not sure what uh, what kind of weapons do you prefer using in uh, Apex Legends? Uh definitely shotguns. <laughs> either well, either uh, Peacekeeper or Mastiff is definitely a top pick for me, and um, yeah. It's like standard, but yeah, uh, shotguns, peacekeeper, massive, and an assault rifle. Uh, mostly, I prefer R three hundred one, R three hundred one compared to R ninety nine, and other like um, assault rifles such as flatline. And depending of my depending on my mood, uh, or if I need to get a challenge on, then uh, I may switch to a different weapon. See now that's really scary. Um, this big boy that's just bur bursting into battle, that people know subconsciously it's going to be difficult to take down, or at least it's going to require most of their attention because of um, their skill set. But also they have weapons that specifically can take down other people very quickly, um, especially if you especially if you get right in their face. I have played games of similar to that where you don't typically expect the uh, tank to do that but if they do it starts get it does get very anx very anxiety inducing <laughs> uh, i love it <laughs> um throwing off people in games or doing something that's unexpected is a great way to keep things fresh and also to keep people on their toes um i do have to wonder if that sort of gameplay also came from your time in tf2 uh or the more ha aggressive one or playing either more aggressive characters or playing a character or playing a class in a very unorthodox way i do you know it would be kind of difficult be a little bit difficult to do that as a heavy in tf2 unless you were memeing around and just dove in with nothing but fists or if you you or if you liked using weights to t did heavy use shotguns in TF2? I actually can't well, remember. Well, te technically, he does have a shotgun as a secondary stock um, weapon, but... That's true. Yeah, a a a anyone with basically a brain cell uses a sandwich, more if they're meaning something else. Uh, I personally use sandwich myself so, and Delicus Bar, so that's why I literally forgot if he even used a shotgun or not. <laughs> but yeah, incidentally, I did use to main heavy during my quote-unquote competitive time. Oh, that's cool. So there is sort of like a DNA there of your uh, character picks, more or less. Mm -hmm. And it's all kind of like influenced thanks to my brother who introduced me to TF2. He started out as a heavy main, also played competitive. And I've also decided to pick up on competitive and play as heavy. Awesome, awesome. Now, once again, I've not, never played Valorant myself, so I'm not sure what kind of uh, characters they got going on there um do you find that that sort of also followed you into valorant or uh, excuse me um with regard to the kind of characters that you play in valorant do you mm -hmm. find that your choice of picks has also followed you from uh, tf2 and also an apex legends and two valorant or like what do you mean because i'm a little confused <laughs> um sorry, uh, sorry uh, let me clarify um so I've seen that Valorant also has different characters you can play who all have different different skills. I'm also mm -hmm. under the assumption that there's also a similar DNA where DNA in Valorant where there's a heavyish character. Is that the case or uh, I 
I really don't think so. I, oh, at least okay. not yet. I have I haven't played Valorant long enough yet. Like I like I only I think I unlocked like two characters, uh, outside you know the main free roster, but for now um, I I either play between Yoru, which is I don't remember how to I don't know how to describe this guy. <laughs> um, he de- he has his own like of um. How do I describe him? It's like a mix between Wraith, Mirage. Yeah, Wraith and Mirage, and also he has his own teleport. So you can send out like a decoy of your own. Mm-hmm. And if people shoot that decoy, they get flashed because, well, it's not you, they're gonna get flashed. And his ultimate uh, is basically um, like Wraith's tactical, <laughs> where he just goes invisible and you can go around people. Well, it's so, not ex- no, okay. Brave is not exactly inv- invins- invisible. Invisible. Al- almost said invincible. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a female wraith, almost actually. To be honest, Brave is uh, female. Sorry. Shit. Why did I say female? <laughs> uh, I had a brain. I had something got stuck in my SSD just now and uh, had a brain fart. So sorry. Um, it's okay. uh, so it's like sounds almost like a male wraith. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, something like that, and and also uh, play Jet, I guess, in Valorant. Okay, so basically a roguish kind of character with some mobility options going on there. Kind basically of trickster. Valorant Tracer. Valorant Tracer. That's actually... Okay, when you say it like that, I have played Overwatch at one point. Um, Valorant Tracer makes a lot more sense. <laughs> the Val- or Valorant's version of Tracer, I should say. Except yeah, without the uh, time reversing skills, I'm assuming. Mm, yeah, she doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you kind of evolved a little bit from playing more heavyish characters aggressively to playing a inherently, well, would you describe um, this character in Valorant as aggressive? Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm, maybe. Like he does have like, uh, it's like can like his abilities can be used for offensive and defensive purposes. So it's like a mix of both. Obviously, I see. That's interesting. Um, going from playing a heavy character style aggressively to playing a character with a kit that leads to a lot more mobility options and a lot more, uh, set more a lot more sabotage and trickster gameplay. Mm-hmm. Huh. But also in Apex, I think it's I think I picked um Valk Moe's Valkyrie that they want the jetpack. So I've more kinda of involved from a big heavy main to a uh, mobile character ish. Pretty much just like losing weight and uh get getting fit, getting <laughs> getting swollen in the mm-hmm. opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, uh, as opposed to su- instead of being brawny and swole, you became a thin, or basically a thin and um, lean. I guess would be. Ah, oh, I wish that was the case in real life. Um, like a lot of things, it's just a matter of practice. If if you really try, if you really try to, but uh, kind of, I don't know. You could use that as an inspiration, maybe. <laughs> but um, all right. So, are you planning on making Valorant more of a, as only a collab game, or do you want to stream that more by yourself a little bit more? Actually, yeah, I want to actually stream Valorant more uh, by myself as well. Maybe invite the friends if they're, you know, up and want to play. Actually, uh, I thought I were, I kind of thought you were going to be late or something, so I was like asking them if they're going to (laughs) play Valorant, because I was waiting on you. Well, like three, three of them were saying, "Oh, either I woke up ten minutes ago, or they were in bed." <laughs> uh, no problem. I did wake up like a few minutes before our start time. I just need to grab something to drink beforehand. But mm-hmm. uh, I personally try to uh, try to stay on the time that I set, just just to both as like as respect for you and your time, and also because I kind of live a busy lifestyle myself, so I try to 
make us make the best use of this time as much as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, laugh, laugh, yesterday or yesterday evening, I pretty much set aside two hours for this conversation, but we ended up only taking about an hour to d discuss uh, Christian's V2, V2 lore and ended up spending the next half hour after that talking about EVE Online. <laughs> Uh, so there's no need to uh, spend the entire time today either discussing um, things if you don't want to. I was pretty much just trying to get an overview of uh, um, what you were going for with your character and what you would like to, if there was anything you would like to accomplish with said character. It sounds more like you're just, uh, instead of a fantasy character or science fiction character that happened to get into VTubing, you're more of your yourself who is depicted, or you're more of a VTuber that is um, you yourself, but depicted as a, um, are you a fox boy? I forget. What is, what is your character again? Uh, maybe you'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so is the current uh, avatar that you have more of like a placeholder or? No, no, it's, it's a cat. It's a cat boy. Oh, it's a cat boy. Okay. So, in this a, a big fluffy cat boy, I see a big fluffy cat boy. Well, uh, people within well, the... well, well, you cannot technically evolve from a okay, so it's like initially it was just a normal human, so just me, but anime styled ish. I see, and the stages, um, from which, um, that character or me, I guess I should say, evolved from. Uh, went from human, then I kind of had a art of me with cat ears, and I probably sent uh, that image to my papa, to my modeler and rigger, oh. which um, kind of made my ears a thing, basically. So, evolved from human to cat boy. Uh, if I may ask, when did you start getting into VTubing, including your PNG tuber face? Mm. Definitely this year, but uh, if, if it's like an exact date, then hold just a moment, please. It doesn't have to be like exact, exact. Uh, even a month will do. Uh, I think it was like something around um, January or fe I think in February. Okay. Uh, I should have it somewhere saved. Yeah, uh, my debut thing was on February. February. February 12th. <laughs> a lot of people seem to have started during in back in February, so that's cool. So February 12th, all right. Uh, how are you enjoying or are you enjoying VTubing so far? I'm enjoying it, I guess. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing more people were watching me, but I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, all, I'm, all done. Mm. Um, I guess I'm just um, definitely not doing it enough in terms of like networking and stuff. And I guess uh, just my content can be pretty boring, I suppose, because I don't really speak that much myself hmm. because I've mostly been like a shut in kid. Aww. It seems like a lot of YouTubers started off from a place of introversion or just uh, being to themselves. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Well, I, I, you go first. Oh, Sorry. oh, you're fine. I was just going to mention that, unfortunately, this is the kind of hobby that kind of requires talking with people. I mean, you literally play video games in front of other people, um, especially since a lot of, especially, or at least in my personal experience, I've found that the reason why a lot of people are actually lurkers is because they like putting on VTubers to listen to in the background or just something to do in the background while they do anything else. So... Unfortunately, that means that talking, even if you're just talking to yourself, is kind of a requirement. Um, yeah, not to I pressure know. you or anything, but that's just my general observation. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. Um, just like, I mean, I do try to speak, and it sometimes does get to a point where it's, it's like my throat freaking hurts from all this talking. Yeah, like, I e feel even, that. Even, even, even if it's just a short, well, if two hours is short, then uh, yeah, for, for me, I would find it uh, short. Like even after a two hour stream, my throat can be just freaking done and you can I guess you can tell how much I actually speak in real life. <laughs> which is barely Are you, I mean we're also we're kind of talking a lot right now, past forty five minutes or so. Um yeah. 
do you find this sort of thing uh, tiring, or it's just does it? You mean talking or streaming? Or either or. I mean, we're obviously talking uh, a lot right now. It's it's like neither of those things, but like both of these things in one. So it's, it's it's like two different things, not three different things. Streaming, talking, and streaming and talking. This is like the third one. That's um kind of getting me. Because you know, um, streaming, I have to obviously, you know, have the right thing uh, to do and also speak. So it's like sort of entertaining. Mm -hmm. Talking itself isn't particularly for me. Um, it, it used to be really hard for me to talk because I've been yeah, a shy person and I had really bad social anxiety. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, yeah, but like everything changed a year ago when I was like, okay, I'm I'm probably gonna be at home doing nothing for two months. Mm -hmm. So I've decided to pick up a job in McDonald's, and that kind of helped me out with my social anxiety. I feel more comfortable in speaking. That's good. Making the monies and also uh, growing out or growing out of your shell with regard to social anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of heartwarming. Um. I find a lot of VTubers, especially in Twitter, who, if they don't, if they didn't used to suffer from social anxiety, currently do, and so they find a lot of difficulty in streaming for exactly the reasons that you listed. Unfortunately, some of them have yet to find a solution, but it's actually kind of, you actually make a good point where even picking up an occupation, especially one like McDonald's, working in fast food, oh my god, um, where you are kind yeah. of required to talk with people, if not with customers, then with your coworkers to get things done, is at least one path to uh, eventually growing out of social anxiety or at least learning to deal with it a little bit better. I'll admit, uh, excuse me? I was saying that that's at, least, uh, that's at least one way to grow out of social anxiety or, or at least uh, learning mm -hmm. how to deal with it. Um, believe it or not, I actually used to have terrible stage fright. Uh, still, uh, no, I, I guess I do have it still to a small extent. Um, I used to hate the idea of, of getting up to talk with people. It's a lot easier to do so with um, all of this in place of my actual face, obviously. <laughs> but um, it is it is a sore thing, a sore skill that, like a muscle, you just sort of have to build up over time, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I did used to work in a call center myself, so unfortunately, oh, I was no. <laughs> forced to do this for over six years, and it's not something I'll ever go back to, ever. It's not something I'd ever uh, threaten on anyone either, but it does end up having to teach you things. <laughs> yeah, kind of mostly was like, yeah, because one, because I already knew that I'm going to be at home doing nothing and be depressed, then, you know, why not be depressed and earn money? And get my social anxiety out of the freaking way, mm -hmm. uh, and so I kind of kind of forced myself to go there. Even though it was like a lot of times when I was like bringing my papers to them, I was like, "Oh no, no, no! I'm anxious. I'm scared. I'm scared." Uh, uh, it I went through. It was scary, but it had it did ultimately help me, and it did ultimately was a good thing in the end. Well, I really, I really enjoyed working there as well. Like, I actually really? felt more um, appreciated too, I guess. But I definitely felt um, more comfortable and just had more fun in freaking working at McDonald's than I ever felt um, in school. <laughs> you know what? That's very unique. I have never, ever heard anyone say that they are happy to work at McDonald's outside the context of making money, but you know, but that's that's a really good way to look at things, actually. That's kind of inspiring. I would almost even say that. I would even say that's inspiring. Like, sure, it was hard. It was obviously scary at first, and I didn't, uh, didn't did not have the best um, managers or co-workers. Oh. I had this manager that was like, I'm real I don't want to be. Uh, let's keep. I'm gonna keep it PG-13. It was a real <laughs> uh, pain, basically. But other managers were either neutral or pretty good, actually. There's, there's, I think one that I really like, and others were mostly neutral. I generally find that to be the case where, 
in a lot of places of work, most managers are probably milk a toast, but then you always have that one person, or if not manager, then a coworker, who just really grinds your gears and feels like it makes the job more difficult than it has to be. But yeah, um, sometimes there is no real way to deal with it other than to just sort of um, grin and bear it, and hopefully things will get better, and it clearly looks like they've gotten Live better for you. the pain. Pretty much live through the pain. You know what? As someone who's also been there, um, with just terrible management, the kind of people that have made me want to quit or do other things. Um, when you if when and if you do end up surviving them, um, it makes things seem it makes one feel pre feel one appreciate the times when uh, life is good so much better. Be like, oh my god, I'm so glad that person is not here anymore, or I don't work for that person. <laughs> Um, did you, do you still work at McDonald's or did you move on to better things since then or? Well, obviously I'm still in school. I'm in my third year, third year out of the fifth of high school. Oh. So that's, yeah. But, um, I've been looking into a weekend job because I'm freaking bored at home. And sometimes it's like, I don't have the energy to stream, but I do have the energy that I could spend on something, but I really don't want to play either, anything either. So I just end up, um, you know, doing nothing at home, depressed. <laughs> but yeah, um, the job search. Um, that I had received one call, but um, the interview didn't go through because they canceled it at the last. Uh, uh. Okay, okay, not not at the last minute, but definitely an hour before. Which, by the way, what uh, the? I also had. Um, yeah, but it's not so bad because. I've applied to KFC, yeah, <laughs> another fast food joint. It, it was in my um, town's mall. And I've applied there uh, 24 hours later, and it's like, hey, oh, can you come up over here at this hour and such? I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I go over there, and okay, my s interview was supposed to be at uh, 4 p.m., and I ended school at 3 p.m., and, I, and the mall is like, right next to my school so i'm just gonna um go hang out for an hour and the time is up i go over there and i ask them for the manager so it's like hey i have i'm supposed to have a job interview and the guy is like uh no sorry dude the the guy that is supposed to take you in uh for the interview isn't here can you come over uh, tomorrow i'm like to myself why didn't you just tell me or text me or something anything yeah it's annoying <laughs> Especially if it's like an hour before your interview. That's really dumb. Yeah. They but I'm really... like, okay, whatever. Uh, next day, I come over 15 minutes beforehand asking them, uh, was it uh, maybe not 15 minutes beforehand? What's well, something like that? And they're like, okay, uh, just wait like 15 minutes and he'll be right there. I've waited for 20 minutes. No one came out. No, no one. I suspected no one ever uh, came or was uh, supposed to go to me. So I'm like, okay, screw this. I left the, not the bench, the chair, the table. Yes, the table. I've laid, I've left the table because I've remained on the table. And I was like, okay, whatever, screw this. And I went on my home, uh, on my way home. I see. I'm sorry it happened to you. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate, but whatever. Uh, yeah, and there's the ice cream uh, coffee shop uh, uh, place in the market, town, center, square, whatever the term you want to <laughs> use. That sounds like it'd be a fun place to work. Yeah, and yeah, they said an hour before my interview that they had to cancel, and when oh. they have, and and the person and the person was like, okay, when I have the time, um. I'll message you about it. Still kind of waiting on it. I uh, brought an SMS yesterday asking them when can I expect anything. Still waiting on that. But uh, in this case, if none of those options work out, then I can always go back to McDonald's because they know me. I've been there a year ago. Hmm. That might end up having to be your best bet. Sucks that mm -hmm. you're being shafted by the uh, other employers, but I know some people, they really do not value potential employees' time, so that ha ends up happening. Mm. Well, 
Sorry, kind of, kind of went on my own rant. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. I mean, first off, I am not kidding when I said that was kind of an inspiring story of you're pretty much uh, pulling yourself, or you pretty much decide that you need to pull yourself out of this depressive state and deal with your social ang- and uh, find a way to deal with your social anxiety. And you did that by literally getting a job and making money on the side. That's it's a that's the sort of thing that a lot of people are told they should do and say they're going to do, but then but then not end up doing because it's a lot harder than it looks. It's very difficult. Yeah, I I really was scared. Like at first going there, I was like, I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this, <laughs> but I knew that it's gonna be a good thing if I do this. Yeah, and it is a good thing. Um. Honestly speaking, prior to our conversation today, I would have never gotten the impression that you had social anxiety uh, to begin with, because to, at least to me, it seemed like you're having a fine time basically talking about um, your gamer history, your uh, streaming <laughs> history, and now your uh, employment history. So yeah, least... yeah, yeah. there's also definitely a different thing when it comes to online side of things versus IRL. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> For one thing, you're talking to a artificial intelligence that came from a BBS. You're not talking to a real person. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> me being made of flesh and blood? I certainly cannot imagine it. Having to like eat and sleep. <clears throat> but you do definitely drink. I do definitely drink a lot. I mean, I'm my liquid my liquid cooling is entirely made out of alcohol. <laughs> um, I, I kid. <laughs> That that's uh, alcohol is flammable. Please please do not attempt to liquid cool if you're operating your uh, CPUs with alcohol. <clears throat> but I digress. So um, it's actually it's that's actually a lot. Um, I must admit that I am more of a fiction writer type person, but I could totally write up a uh, kind of a background overview of who you are as a person, what you like to, what kind of games you like to play, um, mm-hmm. etc. Uh, going back to the VTubing bits, I noticed that you, you mentioned that you actually started off as a regular streamer at first. Were you a face cam streamer or just like a stream or just like a streamer streamer? Um, okay. At first, uh, I've played or like streamed, um, various things, but ne- never really caught on. There's like a timeline. So there's like overall string, whatever the hell comes up to mind. Just my regular solid five. I used to um, back in the day. I really used to grind that part of uh, that online part of the game. FOBs. Maybe you know about it. Maybe you don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there really nothing really caught on. Obviously. Um, then TF2 went ca- came, and uh, I wanted to stream that because yeah, why not? Maybe someone will watch it as well. Um, that did work. But only for that one specific game mode I was um, playing and maining. And if I decided to stream anything else, zero viewers. I had like 300 or 350 viewers, um, not viewers, followers. And zero viewers, basically. Oof. That always burns when you like have uh, really high numbers, but it doesn't actually translate to people that interact mm-hmm. with you. It's also... Yeah, I'm kind of uh, kind of in that spot still right now. I don't know. Maybe it's just a case with networking, whatever. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, uh, back to the timeline thing. I've also had my own. I guess um, I've given a shot at speedrunning a couple of games, Ooh. which which were Metal Gear Solid One, and I don't really remember, but. Um, yeah, that me- definitely Metal Gear Solid 1, which I mostly only ever done all bosses, so just like glitchless, basically normal game from start to finish. And there was also uh, Need for Speed Carbon. Yes, I played car games. <laughs> so you also and, play car or racing games, huh? Uh, well, only ever Carbon and Most Wanted. I don't really play new ones. I unless see. you kind of, unless you kind of can count like GTA Five racing modes. <laughs> uh, I unfortunately will not. I'll not be personally counting GTA Five GTA Five's racing modes as racing games. Fair enough. This is like those two were like my racing games. Uh, Carbon being one of the most uh, enjoyed. 
I, I enjoyed the apartment the most. Sorry, I phrased that sentence wrong. Uh, no problem. I understood you. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was kind of because I used to play that as a child. Still, I am a child, and I still love the game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've the the category, categories I've run in carbon were basically any percent. No, as I don't remember how the c- categories were called. It's like basically all bosses, so like normal gameplay. Mm-hmm. And there was also, I'm pretty sure there was like any percent one, which is, yeah, just go to the finish of the game. And there's a very big difference between any percent and the all bosses. Like you can complete the game. Okay. Um, there's just like three, four bosses, but there's only really one that goes to like the credits and like the whole uh, ending of the game. And you can glitch yourself to that specific boss and win that uh, that one, and it's like okay, GG, <laughs> GG. Um, yes. with regard to your Twitch stream or your Twitch stream career, uh, what exactly are your goals, if any, with Twitch streaming? I should say. Goals. Or do you have any goals, or do you just stream because you enjoy streaming, that sort of thing? No, uh, I definitely want some sort of viewership, even if it is like a small one. Even if it's like five people watching and two people chatting, mm-hmm. that that would be great to just witness. Uh, but if you mean like any long term plans, if I want to, I don't know, if I'm motivated by money or some other things, I can really think so like i've spent the money that i really don't think i'll be ever getting back anytime soon that's fine i mean um i was trying to kind of get an idea of like um well pretty much exactly what i just said uh pretty much why you do what you do it sounds to me like i mean you just flat out said that um you're not really motivated by money it's more of a you just want to have people to who will enjoy watching your content and also talking with that's totally doable yeah. too i mean just a few few viewers here and there is not so bad um from my general experience i found that you can get that pretty much just by remaining consistent and being a kind of personality that people would not mind putting on in the background or someone that's you don't necessarily need to try that hard to be comedic um i find that a lot of people pretty much don't really when I first got into VTubing, I thought that it would be more performative and more like acting. And what I mm. generally found is that I was com- mostly wrong. It's more it's more like people just deciding they want to play or do something with the boys and girls and nine binaries out there and um, just have, pe- have people to talk with. It's literally almost like a talk show <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... You already you already mentioned before that this is kind of difficult at first because of social anxiety and finding things to talk about and how it's kind of difficult to keep it up. Um, pretty much, I guess one way I found people have found a way around that is just by everyone kind of has an internal monologue when they play stuff, like thinking, "Hmm, I should do this. Hmm, I should do that," or hmm, "I hate this," or "I hate that." Uh, one way you could practice that or get around that is pretty much by doing that except talking out loud. Be like, um, you'd be like playing Metal Gear and, like, for example, playing Metal Gear and trying to speedrun a game. Be like, hmm, I should, if I do this, I might be able to shave off some time here, or maybe I can, or maybe I've read up, read online about how you can, uh, sequence break, sequence break here to shave off some mm-hmm. time. That sort of thing. It doesn't have to be anything, it's definitely not something that's planned beforehand, and it's definitely not something that you have to think about. It's just sort of something that you just sort of see out loud. Um, and sometimes when you talk like that, it might come off as comedic to either yourself or to the viewer. And definitely people pick up on that. People also have a tendency to subconsciously pick up on how you feel about the game, whether you're being super serious or whether you're enjoying you're clearly enjoying yourself or not enjoying yourself. Um, you mentioned that there are some games that you dropped because they didn't seem to attract anyone. Um, I will say that, once again, all of this is personal experience, but I've seen that 
most people tend to suggest playing stuff that is not super popular, if only because um, everyone's playing that one thing, and when everyone's playing that one thing, it leads to Twitch sat to oversaturation, so it's more like you're less likely to actually get seen doing that thing than if you were playing something that you legitimately enjoyed. Even if it's even if it's a small thing, if you end up building consistency, eventually people will start seeing your content and they might get curious, and they're more likely to watch a VTuber that is enjoying themselves and makes a lot of uh, funny com a commentary, some of which comes off as funny, as opposed to person over 9,000 that's playing the same thing everyone else is playing but also doesn't talk if that makes any sense um yeah I know what you mean like there's actually a meme that was going around Twitter where someone was complaining about not getting any viewers and the meme goes something along the lines of my brother in Christ you stream not you not you specifically um this hypothetical person in the meme that was in the meme was talking about how was uh, talking about a hypothetical person that streams Valorant but then doesn't talk or interact at all with the viewer. And it doesn't have to be Valorant. It, this actually applies to all streaming, even outside VTubing. It's just a matter of... Um, it's just being a matter of the kind of person that you could pop on in, lurk, and listen to them talk about stuff even if it's not necessarily directly related to the gameplay um kind of talking to themselves sort of thing if that makes any sense mm. and also another good way which you've already are uh, another good way to get some new fans new followers new viewers is to literally just interact on twitter for example um uh, when you first uh, reached out about joining the giveaway I was hosting to even create this YouTube lore stuff, at first I thought that you were friends with Chris, and that's how you found me. Um, and now I'm actually, and then he mentioned that he actually started getting to know you after you followed from <laughs> that Twitter post. So now I'm curious, how did you <laughs> find my Twitter post about um, the YouTube lore? Probably a hashtag. Oh, through the hashtag. Okay. Mm hmm. So you're kind of already on the right track. You already mentioned quite a few times during our talk that networking is a large part of this industry, and it really is. Um, that you'll find as you go through life that networking is kind of the number one way you get anything these days, or even especially out of college, um, getting jobs out of college, or even high school. A large part of it is just meeting people and talking with people and uh, getting introduced to other people. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm a particularly large streamer or Twitter follow or Twitter person myself, and my YouTube numbers are very small. But um, pretty much everything I have to this day, my average viewer count, etc., has been largely due to networking. I originally came from a different community all entirely, and they largely helped me um, get established. And I'm hoping that the same can be said for you in the future. So, um, and also for what it's worth, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation in the past hour. I actually find that your, that your history of gaming and also pretty much how you came to be the cat boy that you are today was mm -hmm. very interesting. Um, I will yeah. say that when I, I wrote this in the terms of service to you, but I put 5,000 words there as pretty much as a capstone just so I, I don't find myself burning out from writing short stories mm -hmm. for everyone. It's probably, what the lore that I write is probably not going to be anywhere near 5,000 words. I'm thinking it might be closer to 1,000 or 2,000. Um, I'm pretty mm -hmm. much just going to do an overview of who you are as a person and how you came to uh, came to start VTubing, how you transformed from a uh, t pro, pro TF2 player, <laughs> pro-ish <laughs> TF2 player into a uh, catboy that streams Valorant yeah, uh, does my Valorant collapse. <laughs> um, if you ever decide that you would like to turn towards more of a uh, fictional or a fantasy standpoint, it looks like the I mentioned earlier that the kind of people that you uh, collabed with, and I'm assuming are you friends with any of these, or did you just happen to run into them by accident? Well, I um, definitely um, run into them by accident like three out of those four. Um, Kumi, I'm definitely friends with. Okay. 
but she did uh, invite me into the collab and I am sort of like starting to um, hopefully get to know them more personally. Uh, personal. Personal. <laughs> you said right the first time. You're fine. <laughs> personally, yes. So that's a good start right there, actually. Um, making friends in this industry is very important. And I mean actual friends. I don't mean like uh, follow for follow type stuff, which yeah. I thoroughly, thoroughly suggest against. Follow for follow is absolute garbage. Um, it's hard to do, do this sort of thing without friends or at least without people to hang out with. It does get lonely sometimes. It, and it's hard when it it's lonely. Does. So that's a good start. Um, uh, I, def I definitely, uh, the, Valorant, the Valorant stream did definitely go better than I was expecting it to go. Because I, mo I mostly like have this mindset of, oh no, people, I'm not going to be ha having a good time. Mm -hmm. But if anything, I've been proven wrong, like very, very wrong. And for what's worth, I'm glad that things have been proving you wrong and that things have been for the most part, going well for you. At least, that's the impression I got. Yeah, ex except me trying to set up Valorant on OBS. That that mm. one was annoying, and I still don't f f like this. Yeah, getting used to OBS or pretty, pretty much any streaming service, not streaming service, um, streaming program, is a pain it's, in the half. <laughs> it's, it's not... I, I think it's like OBS for, OBS's fault. It's like super something, like super mega specific that I really cannot pin down. Because, mm. um, okay, I'm gonna go like, um, out of the topic a bit, but it's like, that's fine. <clears throat> usually, you use like game capture to capture games, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, Valorant just doesn't like that at all. So, oh, all, every, everyone was like, okay, just use window capture. Okay, so I'm using window capture. And I've noticed like like something was wrong with the game. Mm -hmm. For what I I definitely have this yellow ugly border because Windows 10 decides to have a border when it has like um, a, a window that is being captured. Yeah, if you go to like OBS and go window capture on something, then you can see it for yourself. But uh, yeah. that doesn't show up in mine, to be honest. Uh, well. I've seen that a lot of people mm. have that, but yeah, like I couldn't, I wouldn't mind it if uh, if the game actually worked. I mean, it did work, but it's like a stuttery mess. And I own a 134 hertz monitor, so like I definitely want to play at 134 FPS. But uh, something is wrong with the window capture that just screws up my FPS and makes the frame rate dip from. Okay, Ooh. okay, what, whatever, whatever the. It's like whatever, frame dips, whatever happened. But what's what's annoying me was the freaking stutter. The stutter is the worst, I bet. Yeah, and I just couldn't stand. I might like I'm probably gonna have to get a headache from that. So my best, sol my best freaking solution and the best compromise was to use display capture. Hmm. Pros, it, it works. It didn't lag. It it worked perfect. Awesome. Cons, cons is that if I alt tab, everything is visible. Yeah, that is kind of the downside to that. That's personally why I use a desktop that is um, doesn't even have any icons. I just have backgrounds that I like showing people. A lot of girls frontline backgrounds in particular. <laughs> um, I will say that I literally just popped up Windows Capture on my own OBS while streaming to see if I could replicate the issue. Um, definitely no yellow border on my end, so something is something fucky wucky is definitely going on on your version of OBS. I'm sure we'll be able to find a solution to that eventually. Not because that's maybe, definitely... Maybe maybe because I'm using uh, I think it's OBS Studio? I think? Uh, I'm using OBS Studio too. It's not that. Yeah. There must be... There's something going on that for whatever reason is putting a yellow border around your windows. Appar apparently it's like a Windows 10 uh, thing. I wonder if that... Is Game Capture... Part of Windows 10, or is that part of um... OBS? I mean, like everything I'm talking about is uh, OBS. Oh, specifically. you're talking about game capture and OBS. That's interesting. Yes, it hmm. is. Yes, it is correct. I wonder what's doing that then. Huh. I really don't know. Like, I tried to work this out, 
and be, like the night before, not the night, I'm sorry, the morning before the collab, because it's the collab uh, mo- happened on 8 a.m. for me. <laughs> so I woke up at 7. But uh, yeah, uh, before that, uh, I tried to figure out if OBS can work or Valorant on OBS. I found the thing, it worked. Game capture, no di- no dips, everything works perfect, fine. And I switch accounts because uh, apparently we were switching accounts to American ones. So I'm like, okay. And I tried to replicate the same settings and for some reason it just doesn't work. And I have to use this play cache. I see. Well, the unfortunate thing with OBS or really any of these uh, streaming programs is that sometimes you just have to use what works. I personally don't use game capture all that much. Sometimes I will alt tab out of games to set it up or set up game capture uh, because in order to because in order to even select the program, it need the program needs to be running, so it kind of forces me to mm-hmm. alt tab out. I don't typically do that anymore just because I have a clean desktop and therefore I don't mind showing viewers my desktop from time to time. Um, but it kind of sucks that it has to. You have to do that on your end as well. I'm certain that you'll find a compromise to get that to work better eventually, but sometimes that's just how it is. A, a lot of YouTuber streams, even the professional ones I've seen from like Hola Live and Ninja Sanji and V Shoujo, tend to have a little bit of scuffness to them. <laughs> the best way to deal with it is just to accept that the scuffness exists and then move on. Uh, your yeah. viewers. Well, I can guarantee your viewers are not going to care because pretty much every streamer you watch will have some technical difficulty of some kind popping up every now and then. And the ones that do care about a little scuffness need to get alive. I'm not sorry, not sorry to say. <laughs> so you're you're totally fine. I'm sure your collab members did not mind at all, or mind that much either. No, well, they definitely didn't mind because it was just there to play, you know. But I didn't mind because I freaking disliked having have display capture. But yeah. Mm. I understand. Uh, oh yeah, I it's like really like off the topic for like everything, but it kind of is related to like, like lore ish, I guess. Mm-hmm. I also like to cook and bake, I guess. Like I don't know if it's going to be useful or not. I mean, that's cool that you like to cook and bake. Um it's I guess it's I mean, so far the V- the lore of your VTuber is pretty much the lore of yourself, so mm-hmm. um, unless you specific, uh, so by default, since you're not creating a fictional character, it already it is kind of already part of you, the, you as a mm-hmm. person, so no big deal there. Um, mm-hmm. I can include that as part of the write up that I'm going to do after this after our conversation, or you can omit that if yeah. you like it. It. Sure. Doesn't matter. It's like, it's like it's like not super important, but like uh yeah, freaking bacon is like sort of my thing too. But yeah, obviously I also need the freaking mood for that because I'm moody as bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I am curious. Uh, regard with regard to working at McDonald's, were you also a cook there, or did you do uh, more, uh, frontline stuff? Uh, mostly frontline stuff. I wasn't um cooking at all because uh I was underage back then, and because rules and stuff like that, I was just not allowed to anything uh, regarding like cooking. Or I can even uh, get in the. I'm pretty sure is I'm not I'm pretty sure it's not the fridge. It's like the cold room where we hide uh like milk and stuff. Okay. Like just like th- things that are supposed to be left in the cold. I couldn't get in that um basically room okay i had to ask some other coworker. hey can you help me out because i cannot enter because rules okay and i couldn't uh, uh for example so we have like fries on the deep fry i couldn't by the rules i couldn't i should not um put the fries in or out of the deep fryer because it's a deep fryer i could get burned and i'm underage and rules yeah say, so. I'd, I but I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, some other underage workers, like, okay, whatever, no one's watching, who cares? And I think, like, at my, at my last week, I've also kind of done that. I see. So, more like a labor safety law sort of thing? Mm-hmm. So, I've mostly been either packing food, or McDonald's, because it's a runner position, at least uh, in Poland here, because mm-hmm. I'm Polish. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So there are like three positions mostly. Um, so basically cashier, you know, at, at the cash register. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's that other um, position called. Like there's like the, the one you pack food, uh, the cash register. There's also the make drive, uh, either, you know, taking the orders or giving uh, the others mm -hmm. orders to the customers. And there's also, I think it's called the presenter where you just sit by the counter. And if you have food uh, ready to like deliver either, um, either you give them to the table or it's like you share out the number, uh, the <laughs> order number. And yeah, you do that. I've used to shout numbers basically. <laughs> I understand. Uh, yeah, and you're also there to like give utensils, so maybe a packet of ketchup if someone asks, something like that. It also really is a nervous position to be there when there's like an angry customer. It was like something oh, yeah. went wrong. Because like I, I think I don't know, I don't remember if it happened to me or another coworker, but it's like a lady uh, was angry because I think she received like old chicken meat in her salad or something. Ooh. I don't remember, <laughs> and she was demanding a refund. And uh, yeah, we had we had to obviously get the manager because we don't know how to deal with that. Obviously, yeah, no kidding. That's definitely a, something for managers anyway. If you don't need to be yelled at by customers, that's. That, that's, that always sucks. Speaking from a customer service perspective, yeah. It's like the hardest part in any of these positions. <laughs> yeah, there was, I did some blunders also here and there. Um, The one, oh god, there's like two specific ones, but this one is like most embarrassing. I was uh, walking with like the tray with food and uh, all the drinks and stuff bringing to the table. Mm hmm and I think I no, I didn't slip, but uh, the all I did, and I didn't know what to do, so I was like in a panic, going, okay, so the drink fell on the ground, mm -hmm. and I left the meal somewhere I don't remember where, maybe to my coworker, and I rushed to the mm, I don't remember what the, what that what the room is called. It's like the room with like all the like uh, mops and stuff, so you can wash the closet. Yeah, the closet, the, the closet. The janitorial closet, yeah. Yeah, uh, the jan janitor closet, exactly. Mm -hmm. So instead of, like, getting the drink out of the way so it doesn't, like, leak out more of the cola, I just had to rush into the janitor room and take the... Br not the broom? No, not the broom. The mop? The, the, the thing. The mop, yes, the mop. <laughs> Sorry. Kind You're of fine. Screwed up in English. I mean, they, they're um, functionally yeah. similar. It's just that one's for wet stuff and the other's for dry stuff. So you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I took the mop and yeah, I filled up with water so I can, you know, wash everything down instead of, you know, taking the thing and taking it out so it doesn't leak more stuff. So I un kind of made more of a mess because I was in a panic. Mm hmm. It really is still embarrassing to me. It does, it's, it's, it is the most embarrassing memory for Aww. me so far. Uh, but yeah. Uh, there was also like a blunder in the morning. I was working at the cash register mm -hmm. and they uh, and customers asking for like a sandwich or something specific. It was like, I think it was a wrap. But to the names being similar on the like morning menu, I picked uh, the wrong item and I gave them to him and I was like, Oh my god. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get the right thing for him, sorry. Because like, I've later realized that. And he didn't like say it aloud to me at first. Well, it's like, oh no, I've screwed up. I better fix this. So he basically received a free sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot too, because we got so many menu items, and when it's like really early, it's totally understandable that sometimes the wrong thing gets grabbed only thing to do about that really is just to correct it for the customer and move on mm -hmm. and hopefully they're not too angry about that <laughs> yeah that, that guy wasn't angry at me and if anything he was chill i don't think he even realized uh, <laughs> it, it, the order was kind of wrong so wait you were so, the one that figured it out but not them yeah i figured it out because it was supposed to be a wrap and the wrapping was like a sandwich wrap not, not like oh 
Okay, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if like the terminology is like confusing because of you know a wrap means like a food and like paper wrap on the sandwich. <laughs> you know. No, I, I think you know what I mean. I understand what you mean. Yeah. So, uh, no problem there, unless a wrap is also like a common meal. Because usually when I think of wrap, I'm I'm ass- I assume that from the way you're describing, it sounds like. There's more than one food item that is wrapped in a in a wrap, and in the wrapper, from the wrappers, they look pretty much the same, right? Uh, I think like the I think the names were similar because maybe it was a like chicken sandwich or something, and it was like chicken wrap or something, something to do with like the same name, and they've clicked the oh, wrong thing. Okay, it, it might be a difference between a chicken wrap and a chicken sandwich. A yeah, wrap, yeah, something like that. And the only real difference is that one is wrapped in like a. Uh, one of those thick pita bread things that are round that you yeah. literally or it yeah, looks like a roll. Yeah, you roll. And the other one is between two slices of bread. Technically they're both yeah. sandwiches. It's just the kind of bread's different. Yeah, but like they're obviously different things. Yeah, they're different meals, obviously, but that's an easy to mis that's actually a fairly easy mistake to make, so don't feel too bad. Mm. All right. Is there anything else you would like to include in this, or anything, or any plans that you got going on for the future, or anything like that? Anything mm. you'd like to say to YouTube? <laughs> Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hello. Yeah, this the only the second time I've made a YouTube video that was not just a vod. I might have to make a separate YouTube channel for all this stuff. Who knows? Um. In terms of like future, I guess you can, um, can also like mean my IRL future because I'm kind of writing about me. <laughs> yeah, this um, is almost like a short biography, almost more or less. Yeah, I mean, not exactly have any f- like future. I'm just like, I just want to get out of school and work because I personally don't f- self in like higher education. I don't see myself in higher. Uh, in higher education because like i'm already stressing out over freaking high school and i'm <laughs> sometimes barely past oh why would i try to uh, you know torture myself even further and i'm like so, at least so far from the few job experience that i had minus my internship which was freaking horrible mm-hmm. um like i had a good time working so you know I mean, you still got a few years, I assume, left before the end of high school, so no need to stress out about that sort of stuff like right now. Um, yeah, I'm... it's like two and a half years if I pass like everything correctly mm-hmm. with no briefs or something. Um, I'm obviously biased since I actually do have a college degree myself, but um, if you do decide, I do suggest that everyone if they can afford to do so because college is hella expensive no matter where you are in the world these days um i personally suggest that if you can you should uh, pursue higher education but you don't need to feel like pressured into doing so because i generally find at least here in the states i generally find that a lot of people are pressured into doing so because either everyone's doing it or because they're told that they need a degree to get somewhere in life, but that's not true. You don't necessarily need a degree to have a fulfilling life. All you really need is to pretty much um, find something that you find fulfilling and just do that. You could even, or just do that or and yeah, and just I'll, work itself I can, out. I can only ever enter if I ever decide to somehow like change my mind and go, okay, I'm going to go to college or something. Then I obviously would need to pass my uh, high school exit exams. Maybe you've heard of the term matura or something like that. It's basically an ending uh, high school exam that you don't need to pass because it's really used for colleges, basically, and higher education purposes, which um, I'm not partly, particularly keen on because... Um, for for one, mathematics isn't exactly my strong suit. Mm-hmm. Although uh, although I did notice like I'm definitely better at maths than I am at like uh, my literature class, mm-hmm. which is ironic because I really dislike. Well, I actually dislike both. <laughs> I, I I really 
thought I was like bad with math, but I don't know. Somehow, uh, right now, I'm actually kind of having fun with it sometimes. But yeah, uh, math because I'm really dummy with that, and mm-hmm. also I'm really dummy with literature class. I see. It's like uh, there's three tests plus um one advanced test you have to choose for yourself. There's literature class, there's math, and there's English, and you know advanced so we can say advanced english because i don't think for me speaking english is a particular uh problem <laughs> mm. yeah the, the the only one i could safely pass would, would be the english ones but not not the uh, math or uh, polish uh sorry literature class as well mm-hmm. have you thought about possibly going to something that would require the use of english because at least to to me you speak fairly you speak fairly well Honestly, no. When you are on the internet for the past ten years, you kind of get grown. On, you kind of get used to it. I really don't know how the language freaking works to start off. I don't know. I really do not know. It's like a freaking verb, adjective, whatever the hell those things are. I just mm-hmm. speak everything because I've been. I just learned by trial and error. I have a no idea what like how the language works. I really like skip like English class and like don't uh, listen. <laughs> my English teacher. Uh, to be honest, at least over here in the states, we learn that stuff in high school and then we forget about it and don't touch it again when we're in college, just because <laughs> it's only it's only truly useful if you are if you're in a field that requires the use of writing English in a professional manner or in a manner that. How do I describe this? I think it's only really necessary to know the ins and outs of that, of what's part of speech and what um, so like, something what's like, this, so what's that. Something like Tom Scott and with him being a descriptivist. Pretty much, um, stuff like that's only really necessary for a super formal institution. Um, mm-hmm. definitely, you definitely want to be able to write English uh, correctly in a legal manner if you're going to like law or something. Or um, mm-hmm. if you want to sound smarter or sound really formal online and sound older, yeah, that makes that's really important. Otherwise, English is kind of a mess even to native speakers of English since it's kind of a jumble. It's it started off as yes, a Germanic language and became a jumble of God knows how many languages by this point. <laughs> but it's, it's basically a Germanic base with French and Greek and Latin and everything around even it. some Japanese in there nowadays too and other and God our slang our slang is all over the fucking place. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of the English language being a freaking mess. And not only that, it also changes completely depending on what part of the country you are. Um, British English is radically different from American English and American English is radically different depending on the states. And then even British English is dependent is. I've, as far as I've seen and heard, tends to take on a different form depending on what part of the United Kingdom you're in, or even in Ireland, mm. honestly. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Yaruki, um, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining the giveaway. I regret that. Mm-hmm. Um, you and were... thank you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, no problem. Um, I am like I said with only two with only two response i did not feel uh that it would be in i did not feel comfortable just flipping a fucking coin to decide who gets to do this i mean i'm more than happy to to speak with both of you and to work with both of you to create something um Mm -hmm. and this was actually fairly fun uh if you um like i said i'm gonna go ahead and get to work on doing a write-up right now after um, after I end today's conversation, I'll probably uh, create a thumbnail and post this on YouTube first, and then I'll get to that. If mm-hmm. at any time you would like to add more to your lore or um, perhaps discuss doing some, uh, creating something fictional or creating something uh, fictional or fantastic, mm-hmm. uh, feel free to let me know. My DMs on Discord and Twitter are open. Um, of course. And I'll go ahead and send parts of what I'm writing, or it's probably not gonna be that long to be to be perfectly honest, just because this okay. is more like it's more or less a lore and more like a like short biography, biography of you, um, as a streamer. But um, 
I'll post what I create or what I write up to you or send it and send it to you. See what you think. If there's anything that you would like to have corrected or changed, and then when you feel ready, be I uh, feel free to post it on Twitch under like a lore panel or a background panel or even an about even an about page panel. Honestly, um, okay. I would and I would appreciate if you credited. Uh, credited me in that in that um of course. that page of course. but it's not strictly necessary since we're gonna have a record for, of it on youtube anyway but um aside from that do you have anything else you would like to mention or talk about mm -hmm. i don't think so other than you know obviously thank you for giving the opportunity opportunity <laughs> i apologize for my broken english sometimes your English is perfectly fine. I, I see that as someone who literally graduated in English, so <laughs> no worries there. Uh, Yuki, thank you so much. I'm going to give you back the rest of your day, and you have a great one. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.